Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are talking about Tesla ventilators, a couple of new upcoming software features, and a new price target on Tesla stock, as well as a quick check on the general markets, which had a really strong day today, the NASDAQ finishing up 7.3%, which compared to Tesla up 7.6% to $516.24. So Tesla generally today following the overall markets, and I think those were up because of more positive news around the whole virus situation with daily new cases in Italy and Spain having pretty much stagnated or fallen for the last week. And over the weekend, we actually started to see US new cases sort of start to level off. Remains to be seen how long or if that trend will continue, but certainly that growth is diminishing. And we also heard today from Governor Cuomo of New York that the deaths have been quote unquote effectively flat in New York for the last couple of days. So a lot of questions remain, a lot of uncertainty still around the impact of reopening up some things that have been on lockdown, but at least for now, some positive data worldwide showing that we are having an impact in flattening the curve, renewing some of the optimism in the markets. That being said, Tesla is still hard at work producing their own ventilator. There was a lot of drama later in the week last week around what ventilators Tesla was producing or donating. There was some criticism going around that the ventilators that Tesla had donated were for less acute cases and in some instances, people may not actually even refer to them as ventilators. Basically just a semantical issue. This equipment, however you want to refer to it, was still in need by the hospitals, and Elon confirmed on Twitter that the hospitals all knew exactly what equipment they were getting, and confirmed that they needed it. So I'm not sure how anyone could possibly take any issue with that. But even setting that aside, Tesla is still working on producing their own ventilator for acute cases, the most acute cases, meaning these would be the more expensive machines that could treat a broader spectrum of cases as well as the most severe. So Tesla put out about a four minute video yesterday about their progress with ventilators. I would definitely just recommend watching that video. I don't really have much to add to it. They walked through their whole process, but there are a couple things I wanna highlight and some thoughts I wanna share. The first and most important part is that Tesla is using parts from the Model 3 in this ventilator design. This is important from a supply chain perspective. The more parts that Tesla is using from their automotive supply chain, the fewer parts they need to take from the ventilator supply chain, which understandably is facing a strained supply chain right now. Of course, it only takes one part in the supply chain to cause a delay, but the fewer parts that you have to rely on from that ventilator supply chain, the better. From the schematic in a Tesla's ventilator video, it looks like there are at least 20 parts that are coming from Tesla's vehicles, with the most apparent from a visual perspective being the Model 3 infotainment system, including the touchscreen, as well as vehicle controllers and the infotainment computer. So pretty neat to actually see that used for another application. Still no word on how many of these Tesla plans to produce or when it will actually be a shippable product, but they did say that one of the reasons behind using those automotive parts was so they could reliably go really fast with production once the design was complete. The other thing that I think can be a little bit of a positive to take out of this for Tesla is that it adds a new project, a new challenge for these Tesla engineers to be working on. And maybe it's not the most unique challenge, maybe it's not the most challenging thing they've ever had to do, but it is something different. I'm sure Tesla engineers get a lot of different things to work on, but you never know what's gonna spark that new aha moment, that new thought or idea or design that can come back and be applied on a different project. It just adds diversity of thought through diversity of experience. Sure, maybe this won't have an impact, maybe it would just be a small impact, but sometimes it can be good to have a period of time where you reset and refocus on a new project before coming back to your main work. The only other thing that I wanted to mention here on ventilators today is on SpaceX. We know they've been working on this situation too, and Elon on Twitter gave us a little bit more information on this, saying that they are spooling up to manufacture proportional solenoid valves for Medtronic. So a perfect example there of the supply chain strain that we mentioned earlier. Next today are a couple of software things found by Green the Only on Twitter. The first of which is an on-screen in-car video browser for both sentry mode and for dash cam footage. This will be a really nice feature for people to have. Green shared about a 20 second video of this and the user interface looks super slick, way easier than pulling your flash drive out, taking it to your computer, finding the specific file that you want, opening that up, looking through each individual camera. Not an easy process right now, but with this new in-car user interface, there's a navigation menu on the left and you can easily just pull up any date, any time that you want. That'll pull up all the cameras. You get a view of all of them at once on the screen and you simply select which one you want to be maximized. And as with everything else on Tesla's newer MCU vehicles, everything looks super quick to load. This is one that I don't think will probably get a ton of media attention initially, but a really nice feature and I expect a lot of people once they understand this to be excited about it. 
Side note on Sentry Mode, Green also found a new icon for Sentry Mode, and as at Matt Dak on Twitter pointed out, it looks like it's from the Portal video game series. Personally not a fan of it, but it sounds like this was a mandatory change on Tesla's end. Another upcoming update that Green found was a new launch mode for the Raven versions of the Model S and X performance, which it sounds to me like Green says, reads quote, to improve traction, adaptive suspension performs a quote unquote cheetah stance, lowers the front axle, and adjusts dampening, end quote. It'll be interesting to see how much impact that has, but my guess would be that Tesla has probably learned this and optimized for this based on their testing with the Plaid powertrain. By the way, we also got a small update on Friday from Elon on the Plaid powertrain saying, quote, we're going to simplify Plaid a little, was getting too complex, end quote. Not the most exciting update, but an update nonetheless. We also got a couple updates on full self-driving on Twitter, with Elon saying that they're hoping to roll out traffic light and stop signs to a wide US release, end quote, a few weeks and probably worldwide release in Q3, end quote. And then K10, Kristen from the Third Row podcast, asked if we were still on track for a full self-driving price increase, and Elon said, quote, yeah, probably July 1st, end quote. So we'll see on that. Obviously, pricing decisions will be very fluid given the macro environment. Last quick thing for today is an updated analyst note from Jefferies. They have lowered their price target from $800 to $650, but they've actually increased their rating from hold to buy. So they say, quote, we upgrade Tesla with a $650 price target as the only auto original equipment manufacturer that is number one, legacy free, two, engaged in a positive EV sum game, three, doubling market coverage with Model Y, and four, leading the industry's technological transformation. U.S. demand at risk near term from low gas prices, but EVs mandated elsewhere and storage is critical. Post-estimated cut, industry scenario, we see Tesla growing volume 25 plus percent with earnings and free cash flow supported by better productivity, stable ASPs, and zero emission vehicle income, end quote. Overall, a positive note despite the lowering of the price target, which obviously reflects the macro environment situation, but with Tesla pretty much trading lockstep with the NASDAQ today, it doesn't look like it had too much specific impact on today's move. So that'll wrap it up for today. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, April 7th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.